Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I'm back for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. And I've had to bring the camera right up so you can get a full view of this end of my piece. So I'm now at the left hand um, bottom side of the piece and I've been working on a sampler piece. I'm really excited about this so stay tuned um, to do some work with me on that and as I tell you about how I've created this piece. But I've also been adding on the piece that I created for my grandpa on my dad's side, um, which has this beautiful piece of poetry that um, is associated with Remembrance Day. Um, Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Um, and it's got some little military buttons and other, other buttons on a piece of hessian um, with my grandpa's name stitched into it. And then I've used this vintage... Um, sort of browny, greeny coloured um, fabrics. I've cut out a flower piece and then used a sort of a border piece. Added a calendar because it's all about remembrance and, and time and um, a little forget-me-not from Kath, um, Kathy Holden fabric. Um, and then I've created this piece up here which you might not even be able to see all of it. Let me just drag it, drag it down. Um, and so that's got a tartan type fabric. This fabric actually came from Betty. Um, I haven't yet attached this piece of lace. It was actually left over from this. And I noticed before it just um, sits perfectly down there. So I'm going to add that. And then I've got the um, old watch from my granny. And I've just put some little um, couching stitches over with cotton um, and secured it um, at each of the joins. So it's perfectly intact perfectly safe it can't move um, and likewise I've stitched each of these ones down so this beautiful little Scotty dog um, because granny had her lassie dog um, and some other dogs that were very similar to this they weren't the black color they were a brownie color had a little scamp scamp the skellywag um, and then a button because she yeah liked her ornate ornate things and again it's the heart prompt that we had a while back and a scotch um, thistle as well with a very ornate decorative and that's a brooch um, and then an earring because she always wore clip-on earrings and that was just a, a single random earring I had in my in my jewelry box um, and then this little um, Kathy Holden um, cut out reminded me of the the chairs in the sort of the formal sitting area and then um, at granny and grandpa's house and then i've carried across the motif of the butterfly which i'd used on the other um, side um, and i'd kind of like it for that sense of when we're thinking about wars and about loss and things like that um, there's also yeah that opportunity and that sort of um, yeah the symbolism of butterflies and freedom um, so yeah, I've still got to add some little, um, I was going to say antlers, is that what they're called? Antennas, no, they're not antlers, <laughs> antennas. Um, so that's that piece, but let me bring you down. Just close your eyes if you don't like the process of coming down. And I thought we could do some work on the sampler piece. I'm down to there. Hopefully I can see and hopefully I'm not in frame myself. So it was interesting. I had this um, piece of fabric that had a sampler um, printed on it. I don't know if it was an original sampler or a sort of a recreation of a, of a sampler, but it was in the burgundy. It was on a yellow fabric. When I put the fabric on top of my um, lace piece that forms the background of this, it all looked a bit too new. And I was wanting to evoke something that kind of felt antique and, and vintage. And then I had the idea to actually put um, the piece of sampler behind the lace. So I unpicked um, the side here and unpicked the side here, um, put it in. I used um, steamer seam light on the back of it, which is a double sized, um, double sided. Uh, adhesive basically so it's like an interfacing but it's not um it's really just an adhesive layer and you can iron it on um one side of your fabric and then you can peel off the um the backing and you can reposition it so i was able to kind of position this where i wanted 
um, and then do the final iron to actually adhere it to the piece. And I've also used steamer seam on these smaller little pieces. And apparently you don't even have to stitch it. You can just leave it like that. I am going to add stitching because I like to have those sort of slow stitching elements. But the great thing is it gives you a really great adherence without sort of getting bubbles or crinkles. Sometimes you want that texture, like I wanted that sort of roughness so that I didn't even take, I try and iron this and take out the out the wrinkles of it. I want that, that roughness. I want that hessian. I want that sort of texture. But other things you want to sort of, yeah, sit down um, flat. And certainly doing this meant that it was very easy to get it into position and then get it um, fully fully adhered. So at that stage it was just um, behind this and really you could only see it through these little um, sections of the lace. And then last night I had the idea because there were some holes over in the lace further over and I thought oh wouldn't it be nice to kind of cut into the lace and have it as though the lace has worn through over time with people touching it or like you find in those sort of antique and vintage quilts where there's layers of fabric that people have um, put into it and there's hidden treasures to find. So that's what I evoked by just sort of following where the design was and cutting around it. There are a few points like here where I'd actually sort of cut up a bit further and then I just used some of the little scraps um, I'd cut out from there just to sort of bring it a bit more and bring a bit more sort of um, bordering back into it. So I thought we could start um, by doing something up here because I'd like to show a bit more of the letters um, over here. I want to leave the flower flower elements, but I just think it's such an effective way um, to kind of yeah add layering and interest to the piece. So I thought I wanted to share that with you in case you've got something similar to this and you might want to try that, that layering approach. So let me grab my scissors and then the other thing I want to work on with you today is another piece which is this bird piece and a special little piece of um, French writing that I want to incorporate with that and then making one of my little oort jar nests as well. So I thought there are some things we can do today. Let me just check that I am properly on camera. Yes I am. So I think I want to just, um, I'll need to leave the sort of join there. So I think I'll just cut around this area. It's always a little bit scary cutting, but you can always add it back in if you want to. And it's just going to give it that, that rustic look. So you, when you're doing this, you don't want it to look too perfect. I think that's what I'd done up here. And that's why I just had to add a bit of that, that randomness in by just adding one of these little these little bits back in. So I think that's pretty good. I might just take it a bit further over so the S shows as well. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day or a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening whenever you're watching this. headed in this morning to go and see Alex's new cardiologist so he had a referral to go to the I think it's called the pacemaker and electrical devices um, cardiac clinic at the um, Alfred Hospital here in Melbourne and so we met with a new new doctor and it turns out as we suspected that Alex will need to have a um, defibrillator fitted in his side so apparently they can do one version which they've done for many many years like 20 or 30 years um, possibly even longer um, where they fit it in your um, heart so the wires actually go into your heart um, and apparently that works very well the only problem is if you get infection in your body and it then travels to that area because the infection moves around your body in your blood, comes into the heart, all the blood passes through the heart. Apparently the wires are a particularly attractive thing to the bacteria and once the bacteria grows on the wires, even antibiotics won't kill them off. So you're at a heightened risk then of essentially, I think it's like, like blood, blood um, yeah, blood infection, so sort of sepsis and the growth of bacteria on your um, 
So now I'm just before, I'll just interrupt my story and my talking about lovely topics. Um, what I tend to do when I'm working on, because I've got my other bit of blanket folded underneath, is I'll put a book underneath so that I don't accidentally stitch my bits of blanket together. And I'm speaking from experience here. So I'll pop through from the back. And so what I'm now just going to do is just sew around the edges. It's what I've done over here so that they don't pop up. It's going to stay very secure. And even if little fingers want to sort of feel around the edges, um, it's going to keep it nice and secure. And so I'm actually just going to work on the front because it becomes really not much fun trying to feed from the back and the, the front. Um, so if I work on the front, I've got the book underneath. I just take little stitches moving my way around and anchoring down the piece and so the other thing I was worried about with the steamer seam which I use the adhesive is that it would make the needle really gummy or be too hard to push through but it's actually not too bad it definitely doesn't feel like you're working just on a, a single piece of fabric it's got a, a bit more um, sort of texture to it I guess or a bit more thickness to it um, but it still works okay and if you do get a bit of gumminess on it it's um, yeah it's not too bad I find it's best usually to do it one day and then stitch in it the next um, and I have also heard that you yeah you need to get it quite hot with the iron and apply that steam to it to really get it to, to set so it'll be interesting to see how it holds over time but um, some of the people that I watch um, on YouTube, like the Collage Quilter, she swears by it for her, her design, so I thought I'll give it a go. Previously I've just been stitching everything, but sometimes I just hate the thing of having pins, and sometimes I also want a nice um, sort of, yeah, flat surface, so it's been good for that. And also for these little pieces where I might not want to do all the stitching straight away, I'll want to come back to them and... Um, stitch them later at my leisure, but I want to get them down onto the onto the blanket. So I thought I'd show you this end of it. I have also put down um, the piece for my dad, the beehive, and integrated that um, along with the piece finishing off the stitching on the piece for my nana. I've got, I've got to add my grandpa's, my other grandpa's piece next to nana's and my piece. Still got to work on piece for my brother and his family so there's lots still to do but we still have a few weeks and I believe this week's just an extra week to work on this prompt although I think Rachel and Sarah might have said that they're going to give us a um, another project or something an optional optional bonus extra so I'm just going to keep traveling around here and just catching the sides of the fabric Come back a little bit. So you're really just wanting to, yeah, just anchor it, anchor it down. You could obviously lose it, leave it loose and flapping, but probably over time it would start to um, degrade or catch a bit. So I want this to be a, a sturdy piece. Just checking now if it feels like it's pretty much, it does actually feel pretty good, so. So I'm using this nice long needle because it does actually work well for doing that feeding through and then I can just take it through to the, the back to finish it, finish it off. So that's a fun little technique. I just love the effect of it and I'm going to think about where else I can do that on this piece because I think it adds a lovely found treasures feel which fits really, fits really well with the project. Is that done so I will leave um, the piece there so I've still got to get work out what goes what goes above it um, and I'll probably add yeah add some more things in but just yeah I just absolutely absolutely love that um, I've still got to stitch down up here into the fabric just to get all of that to adhere but who knows I might even I might even do some stitching I thought I'm not sure how much you can see up here but I thought I might do some stitching in the greens and the burgundies around these leaves and flowers 
possibly, although it depends if I need the space. I never thought um, I'd actually be um, sort of running out of space, which I'm not, but it's only a, probably a few more pieces over that way before I get back to the, the other side. And then there's only a relative, like this is the sort of halfway mark of the blanket up here. So there's actually not too, too much space um, to fill. There's enough. I won't run short, I don't think, but I'm feeling like I can actually, um, yeah, get a pretty good running on the blanket for now. But I think it's going to be something that I will definitely add to over time. So where did I put, I showed you the birdie design and where did I then put it? These are the questions, Christine. <laughs> where did you put the birds? The birds, where are you birds? I'm looking and I'm not seeing them. If only you were in the room, you could tell me where they are. Are they hiding here? No, no, they're not over there. I was standing up, wasn't I, when I showed them to you? Let me just stand up and see if I can see where the birds have gone. My threads are there. My goodness, my goodness gracious me, Christine, where have your birdies gone? Ah, oh, there it is. It flipped and flopped over there. Apologies for that, folks. So this is my little birdie, birdie piece. And I might even bring you down a little bit further. Probably that's probably a tiny bit too far. And so this is a lovely piece of fabric. Um, I haven't worked out where on the piece it will go. Um, I suppose it could even go, go up here. But again, I'd lose those, lose those flowers. We shall see. Um, and I've written using my friction marker. Um, I've written on it, just grabbing a friction marker in case you haven't seen them, although you probably see many of us talk about them. You can usually get them here in Australia, just at the supermarket um, pilot friction ball. So just a sort of a ballpoint pen. Um, it has an eraser end on it, but the way we use it um, in this is that it's heat erasable. So you just get your iron, or your hairdryer. I've even resorted to a the steam from a kettle on occasion when I've been traveling and haven't had an iron or a hairdryer. Um, and it erases with heat. The only time it won't erase totally cleanly I have found is if you're working on a really dark fabric. It can sometimes leave a lighter outline. It's like it almost bleaches the fabric or something. Um, but on white fabrics or pale fabrics, it yeah, works works fantastically. So I've written a little French quote, which is petit à petit, l'oiseau fait son nid. Um, and it um, translates along the lines of little by little, the bird, l'oiseau, um, builds its nest. And I just thought it was a most perfect little phrase, um, both for this piece, which has the sort of French burgundy bonheur theme associated with it, um, but also for those of us that love slow stitching, little by little, the bird builds its nest. And it was also the perfect opportunity for me to create one of my oat jar nests. Um, so oat jar, where I throw all my really small scraps of thread, um, or if thread gets knotted or something and I just can't be bothered um, unknotting it. And I just love making little birds' nests from that. So I'm planning to um, stitch these letters, and I thought let's have a let's have a look at what colour we might like to use. And I I really like using silk silk threads. I've used these ones I think in the earlier piece I did for my Nana with the quote from Rumi. Let's have a look what else I. Have in here. So these are gum nut silk yarns. Thinking even a nice brown could be lovely um, just to sort of blend in with the branches and things. So these are all second hand. Pure silk gum nut number 947 and it's the buds range. It's got a lovely little sort of yeah marking to it. So I think that's a that's a definite goer. This one's a this one's a beautiful warm colour, almost caramelly. So I think I'll I think I'll keep that one keep that one out. So that's that for that. But I probably won't get too much into that. I might do a little bit of stitching with you on that. But I thought we could build um, the nest. But 
maybe first up we'll actually put some feathers in on the bird. So, I might just grab my hoop. This is just a, a Kmart hoop, not an expensive one, but it does, does do a pretty good job. Then you just want to hold your piece a little bit more sturdy and keep it sort of in frame when you're working on it. And so I was even thinking, I had a um, comment from Ray, um, who's one of my lovely viewers, saying she was really surprised. Um, I was, I'm not sure exactly which video it was in, but possibly in one of my stitchery swap squares um, to see me using um, just regular cotton. And um, I do use it because it is actually a really great um, sort of, gives you a really fine um, working and I love using it for things like feathers. And so I thought even on this piece, um, I might just use regular sewing cotton. So this is just a container. I've got some punch needle yarns as well in there. But I thought I would just pick out some um, of my regular cottons that I can use to just add some feather, feather dimensions. So it's so good having these drawers right next to me now. Um, because it means I can easily see what I have got. I think that might be a little bit too yellow. I'm thinking I want more of a, a brownie, goldy. Yeah, I think that one will be better. Um, so I've got brown. So there's some little bits of green. So I'm thinking, I don't know. Or I could use a darker green because I might use the lighter green on the, the leaves possibly, but I'll get that out anyway. And I've also got this one which actually has variegated and has the sort of the, um, the burgundy and the yellows as well. So that could even be kind of handy maybe on that back section. No, that's the wrong colours. So, so I think that's probably enough colours and we can have a do a little bit of stitching of the bird. So let me have a think what needle I would like to use. I think that should be good. Um, so I might start with the little, the breast. So I could either use the, that orangey red or I could bring the burgundy in a bit more strongly which I think I will do because it's almost got that sort of yeah that orangey red undertone so I think I might just sort of bring in more of the colour of the piece by do, using this burgundy thread. Actually I think Ray's comment could have even been on one of my other stitchery swap squares that I received from someone else but I can't remember talking about maybe I was talking about using threads in that video or maybe it was something they'd used in their technique but yeah definitely you absolutely can use regular sewing cottons so I think I'm just going to do some little um, open uh, chain stitches just make sure I'm staying on camera Sometimes I do them properly where you angle up through the fabric, other times I'll just um, yeah, loop the thread over as I, as I do the next one. So we've got, what have we done there? Christine, what have you done? I think I've created a knot, not where I need it. Hang on, I will just, we'll do, just restart that again. Thank you. Never mind me, I almost flicked the needle across the room. It was normally, it was almost my usual sort of um, debacles. Let's just, let's just restart, shall we? Okay, I don't think we've got any knots. Let me just check that we haven't created any knots in our thread. I've probably got a way too long piece of thread, but never mind. Okay. So I'll just start up here. Oops, now it's got a too big of a hole. I'll just pick a different hole to come out of. So then I'm just going to angle my needle down 
put the thread underneath to form a little little loop then I'm going to do my next little loop again coming down thread under the tip of the needle and then you get another little loop and then I'll just work my way down the chest of the bird just adding little feather shapes with um, chain stitch or you can do little detached chains if you want as well that's another good variation for for little feathers and it just lets the color underneath shine shine through I do love stitching birds I will never tire of um, flowers and birds and botanicals and and words but I don't think I'm tired I don't feel like six months has been enough for this um, project or five months so far anyway um, because I've just got so much I want to add to it but it can be a living project a little legacy stitch project I think is what I see this as a bit of a family so uh, who was it the lovely Giusy, um who described it as like an open open book because it's going to be on display and it's an open sort of family well people have those family bibles where they yeah write about the family and the family trees in there and this is a more sort of I guess a more artistic record but I think I will write a little piece to put on the back so that it explains the significance of the different pieces so if one day someone somewhere is um yeah looking at it they they know the significance so I know the lovely Sue Brown says it's yeah really important that we kind of yeah, recognise the work that we are doing is art and um, yeah, we should. I think it's Sue that talks about um, yeah, dating and um, putting your name on the back. I think a few of my commenters have um, yeah, talked about that. I do need to look into getting some little, little labels or something printed that would support that. So again, always just making sure your thread's under the needle so you get that little, little loop. I didn't bring you down just a little bit further so you can see what is going on. The skies are su turning such a beautiful pinky colour as the um, sun sets. Just gorgeous. Wish you could see it. But I think I've moved my camera enough um, for you, so I'll just describe it to you instead. So what's your favourite sort of slow stitchy related quote or crafting crafting quote? I think this one is just so beautiful. Little by little the bird builds its nest. Okay, so I'm down to the bottom of that little belly section. So I can actually just work my way up and do chain stitch the other direction and I'll just start from where, where this little bit is and again just looping looping the thread under my needle I did this on the little stitchery square that I sent to the lovely Leanne from Leanne's Crafty Cupboard. Um, the beautiful bird scene. Beautiful blues. It's a Moda. Um, what's the fabric range called? Blue de France, that's right. I've bought some, bought some sections of that fabric, which I'm looking forward to working on for myself at some stage. I don't think I've used that in any of my own pieces yet. Thinking maybe the next Roxy project might be a blues for me. Depends what it is. I'm so curious to hear. Maybe we'll actually get to hear about that this week. Who knows? But as I say, I'll, I might even, depending on the theme, I might even carry on with this, this piece. I do love doing the Roxy project, so I do wonder if at some point I'll kind of have so many, so many creations I won't have enough places to put them. Now, this is a thing not to do if you're working. Um, don't stitch your piece from underneath. So, I think it's just the last stitch that I've done it on, so it's going to be possible to undo it, but um, <laughs> keep an eye 
on your piece and don't stitch it. Oh, isn't that funny? I know we've all done it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna feel too bad. Or if you haven't done it, then <laughs> well done. <laughs> I do it quite often, hence why I normally use that little book technique if I'm particularly working on the um, the pieces um, where I've got the blanket underneath. But I didn't think I was going to do it today, but nope, I did. And this one. At least I realised early enough I didn't have to go back and um, sort of redo the entire the entire row. I guess I better better hold my piece up maybe and. So I'm just going to restart my little stitches because I think I probably tightened the last one up so it didn't form a full, full little shape. But it doesn't really matter. You're just creating nice little random feather shapes. But it does give a lovely plumage using this little chain style stitch. quite windy outside it's been another funny old day they forecast drizzle it didn't really drizzle that much it was a very tedious drive though down down to the hospital this morning I think it took us an hour and a half for what should have been a sort of a 40 40 minute trip luckily we'd left plenty of time but in the end we were pretty much there right on right on time for the appointment still had to wait as you always do with appointments I had said to Alex if he wanted me to park the car and he could he could go in ahead, but he said, no, no, it's fine. But they did lots more testing. I think they had a beginner um, nurse that was taking the readings of the, is it electrocardiogram, I think? Um, but she had to get one of her colleagues to come in that was telling her which colours of the plugs relate to which of the parts of the body. So I learned, learned that, <laughs> learned a bit about electrocardiogram um, plug colours. I find it all fascinating. I tend to ask more questions than Alex does of the, the medical professionals too, but I figure, well, that's what they're there for. Better to ask a question than not have an answer and not make an informed, informed judgment about your own health. I think for when you're the patient as well, you can sometimes be just a bit sort of overwhelmed as well. So it's nice to have someone else with you that can, um, yeah, can ask questions on your behalf. And hopefully the defib never actually has to kick into action and do anything. That would be the best case scenario because really then it's just that insurance policy for if it ever is needed because it does apparently feel like a horse kicking you if it does go off and have to um, give your give your heart a, a kick but unlike a horse kicking you you don't get that residual pain afterwards it's just in the moment that apparently it's quite unpleasant but then once it's done um, yeah it's not like you've got the bruising or anything else the pain that you would get from yeah a horse And so when they actually fit the device, apparently while they're under general anaesthetic, they get the device to, to do a kick, essentially. Um, but at least Alex won't be aware of that because he will be under anaesthetic at that time. I'm just trying to work out how best to have this on camera and not to be stitching the, <laughs> the surface underneath. So I'm just finishing filling in this little red section. I 
I won't make you watch the whole bird, but I know some of you enjoy the longer videos where you just get a bit of a bit of chattering and a bit of you can look up every now and then and see what's being what's being done. So there you go. I hope you can see that. Let me just let me just angle the light a bit more over here. So yeah, it gives a lovely, lovely little feathery texture to it. And I'll be able to add all sorts of beads and other embellishments, although this is the area where I'm planning to make my little little nest. Um, so maybe we'll actually, we'll do the nest maybe next. And so even the back looks quite nice, it's little, um, yeah, sort of feathery sketchiness. I'm really enjoying, the other thing I like for these regular um, cotton threads is you can do a stitchy kind of, um, sorry, sketchy kind of version of stitching. I did use that on one of my stitchery squares recently, which I thought would have been what Ray was commenting on, but I think the comment was on another video, the video of the square that I got back, but maybe she was she was watching in succession, so you'll have to let me know, Ray. Um, so will we maybe we can do just a little bit of um, stitching. I'm wondering if we come down and do the little golden bit next to here, maybe. Let's do that. bit of leftover thread to my oat jar because I'll be looking for my nice burgundy colours for the nest. It's good when you work on a project because you end up with threads that kind of co colour coordinate with the project and then you've got the ready-made um, yeah threads to make your little your little nest. So just tying a knot, passing it down the thread. I'll start my little feathery bits here. So again just putting our thread under the needle to create a little little loop and trying not to create a knot in the process. What's going on here? What's happening here? Okay, so we've only just started out. If we have to if we can't get this knot out we'll just oh no there we go. Just a bit twisty, I think. What's happened? Oh, did I somehow bring the... Hang on, I think we will have to just... Um, I'll just take that bit off and we'll start fresh. But somehow I managed with the knot pulling through. That's okay. Let's go again. Might actually start this way. So again, I'll do my little chain stitches, but equally you could just do little straight stitches, little long and short stitches, feather stitch if you really wanted to. Although, yeah, I find this gives a better, better plumage than than feather stitch. really does remind me of little little feathers when I do it this way. So I've had this piece floating around in my head for quite a while. I've had the fabric floating around and I'm really pleased to be getting it getting it stitched. And I think I'll put my lovely little fabric covered buttons on this piece as well. I was thinking my little, um, I always forget what they're called, those um, little picture sort of brooches. Um, oh goodness, I've forgotten the name of them again. Nope, the name has escaped my head. Got them somewhere here. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. 
these little these little things you'll be all yelling out at the screen what they are um, it will come to me soon in a moment <laughs> sometimes think that's a sign of a, a long day where the brain just can't bring to bring to mind the name of something that you know the name of not portraits not monograms ah oh, goodness You can do these stitches as big or as small as you like, or you can vary them as well going down the, the third. Try not to catch onto the, the buttons on your piece. Sometimes when you pull them tighter like that one, you do get one that's a bit more, a bit tighter, which is fine. Don't mind them being a bit smaller down the bottom. As you can see, the regular um, cottons give a really, really nice little effect, really delicate, which I guess you could get with a single strand of embroidery floss, but the cottons are often nicer to, to stitch with. They give a nice, clean, clean finish. So they are great for detailing. I guess when you've got a beautiful design, you want to still let the sort of, yeah, the design shine through. Sometimes the, yeah, the challenge of thread painting is that you're like, oh, I really love this piece of fabric and this flower. Do I really want to cover it, cover it all up? And that's where sometimes this fab, um, this sort of thinner thread can be really great for just doing some, some sketchy outlining rather than trying to cover the, the whole thing. So yeah, that's there. I can do some more of that around around the eye, but um, yeah, it gives a really, really sweet, lovely effect. So I think we'll tie that off and we can do our nest because I love myself a nest. If you've been watching me for a while, you've probably seen me make my oat jar nests, but um, they're fun. And if you haven't been watching for a while and you're new to the channel or a new subscriber or thinking about subscribing, thank you so much for, for coming by. So I've got a tin, old um, tomato tin. So I end up with a lot of oat jars. So um, now I've started going through, but some of the colours aren't the right colours. But I've got these little selection here. And I'm just going to have a look through and see what else I've got that's... So I'm going for greens, golds, maroons, sort of that, that colouring. I don't think I want the thick wool in, but I do want all the nice, interesting, interesting bits and pieces. Because I've got some lovely silk um, threads that I've used along the way in the piece as well. And some of these ones, these fibres, you can actually undo and get them even fluffier. So this is the end of, I think, a silk thread of some description. So that's fabulous. Ones like this can even be great for like a tail of a bird. I won't use it on this one, I don't think. But um, yeah, it's fabulous. You can also sort of, yeah, weave it. Um, not weave it, but stitch it into your, your bird to add texture. Seeing if there's any more little particular bits and pieces. That's a nice piece of wool in a sort of a khaki brown. Not sure if that's too yellow. I think that's okay. That's okay. So that's probably enough, I think. Um, I might just take this little bit of green and another bit of bit of green and green, and that's probably enough. So. What I will do now, oh, I found some little bits of ribbon embroidery in there, which I didn't need. Um, I'm going to have a look at my fibres and see which of the fibres I can sort of break down to be a bit more. See, I think that wool I'll leave as is, but this one, this fibre, I can actually um, take it down into some thinner, thinner bits. So you get some constituent parts. Likewise, this one. 
just which just helps to kind of distribute the colors through through the piece so I'll just sort of pull pull everything a little bit and see what else I've got that's able to be I think this one's a bit the wrong color so I'm going to get rid of that one but I'm going to see if I can pull apart this one here this is a silk thread I think so it'd be nice to spread that throughout oh it actually came apart must have been a bit weak maybe at that end or maybe you're not meant to sort of unravel them like this but yeah it gives a lovely look at that lovely curly effect this one I think is part of just my big ball of variegated I'm not sure how well that one unwinds itself or not no it doesn't really want to unwind so that's fine this is just a regular embroidery floss so I can definitely take that apart into some constituent parts and then I'm just going to try and sort of distribute not have any chunks of color there's a bit more embroidery floss which I'll take apart as well quite a big piece in fact that one probably shouldn't even be in the Yorks jar I think I can use that piece for something else so I'll save that one I think this is that variegated one that doesn't really want to unravel no so I'll leave that as is and then I'll look at the sort of the complement of colors and make sure I've got enough of um, the colors that I want but I think I, I think I'm happy with that and what I'm thinking is I will put the little nest, I'll take it out of its hoop. I'm thinking the nest can sit down here, I think. Would be a nice place for it. And so now I'm just going to sort of start to fold it in on itself. So I'm sort of folding but pulling at the same time. I don't really know what my technique is, but this is just how I how I always do my nests. So it does just sort of, it's almost just making it a little bit more cohesive, almost like a bread where you're kneading it into the into the center. Now that one I want to distribute around a bit more. Put a little hole in the center there. So I'll just keep going with my with my kneading now that I've distributed that piece a bit more. And you just sort of yeah keep keep doing this, stretching it and folding it really. As I say, there's probably a bit more madness than method in this. Um, as you can see, I've made a little hole in the center, which I don't want, so I'll just do a bit more folding in to get the center a bit thicker. And then once I've got something, I don't think I really need that yellowy, that bright yellowy bit. Just keep taking it in. And once you get a sort of a shape that you're, or the sort of, yeah, the distribution that you're, you're happy with, you can then thread up a needle, um, be like me, and actually know where you've put the needle that you took off, which of course I don't know where that has gone. I'm looking, you're probably seeing it and I'm not seeing it, although you might not be on it, there it is, over here. So I've still got some thread left on my needle, so I will um, use that to start. And I think I need to distribute a bit more around, so I'll do that in the center of the nest, I think. And then I'm just going to take my needle in and out through the nest to start sort of binding it together, I guess into at least a sort of a disc shape. So just sort of passing my needle around and the thread just starts to kind of attach the 
pieces together loosely. So many wonderful things you can do with oughts, so I never never throw out my, my threads. I do have a bit of a collection at the moment, so I'll have to do some more oughting projects over the, the summer. I keep talking about the summer as though it's sort of going to be all the time to do everything, but it rushes by as well, like the year. Who else is thinking how on earth did we almost get to get to December, honestly? Travis was trying to unwrap his um, presents. I put all his um, dog toy presents into a box and then this evening Travis the dog thought that he might try and unwrap the box because I wrapped the big cardboard box in um, wrapping paper as well to make so it would look nice and festive under the tree. I had hoped to have Travis's presents under the tree but um, he decided that no, he might like the advent version of the dog toys um, calendar where he would yeah, go and get himself a toy whenever he felt like it um, <laughs> and unwrap it. Still remember the first year when he didn't know anything about um, presents, so we had to kind of put treats in there so he would know to tear tear the wrapping paper off and unwrap them. But now he is a smart boy. The other thing I saw Travis the dog do the other night, which really impressed me, was he was um, this was one of the new toys that he had actually got for himself from under the tree, which I let him keep. Um, just a little squeaky squeaky toy with little ropey legs on it. Anyway, I noticed he was um, sniffing all over it, and I thought, oh, okay just smelling it as dogs are want to do. Anyway, sniffed all over, turned it over with his nose, sniffed a bit more, and then he went to the exact point where the squeaker is within it, um, and he'd been clearly sniffing for the, the plastic um, and working out where the squeaker was, so he didn't have to go and look for the squeaker with his tooth. Um, he just, yeah, sniffed it, sniffed it out, which one I thought was, yeah, great sniffing, and two, just so smart. <laughs> So I do sometimes think that Travis is, yeah, smarter than, <laughs> smarter than Alex and I. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. I'll just say he takes after his, his mama and his papa. Interested in the world. And they do have the Labradors, because Travis is a black Labrador. Um, like lovely Fleur Woods dog. I see you saw something on Instagram with Fleur and her beautiful black Labrador. Um, but yeah, they have the black Labradors that sniff out the electrical. So people might like hide a SIM card or something, criminals in their houses. And um, yeah, they have the black Labradors that sniff, sniff those out. So I'm not even going to worry about tying off my thread. It's, the thread will just become part of um, the design. Um, and as you can see, I've created myself a beautiful little nest and I can keep I can keep um, stitching it I probably will do a bit more stitching over the base of it so I might use my burgundy but you can re really use whatever threads you want definitely just use your sort of your cheaper sewing cottons etc for this step um, it's all just about creating a textile artifact. We could even make nice um, decorations for your Christmas tree as well. So I'm just going to pop through here. I don't know why I even put a knot in the end. I didn't actually need to do that, but I was on autopilot. So yeah, the, um, the police force here in Victoria and I assume in other parts of the world, yeah, use black Labradors to sniff out sim cards and other devices so they train the dogs to sniff those things so i always thought if travis really wanted to he would have made a fantastic police dog but no he chose the chose the leisurely life of looking after looking after us keeping us entertained and laughing and smiling which is a pretty important job one we're very grateful for grateful he picked us and we're pretty sure he's grateful that we picked him as well. Still remember when guide dogs rang me up and said we've got we've got a puppy who's been just briefly out with one of our other other families, but the husband's gone back to fly in, fly out. This was during the whole sort of COVID era. Um, would you mind taking him? Sure. 
because previously I hadn't been able to take the really young puppies um, with guide dogs because um, you have the guide dogs with you at all times and with workplaces if you worked in the city you'd only ever be matched with um, older older guide dog puppies um, because the young ones aren't meant to kind of experience the busy um, city environment and because pre-COVID times I was working it was rare that I'd work from home sometimes on really hot days particularly when I was raising a a guide dog um, puppy I wouldn't um, go into the city just so as not to sort of stress them them out too much on a really hot day um, because even the guide dogs themselves might sort of travel with their handler in a um, taxi or something on a really really hot day because dogs don't do well with heat but then yeah COVID meant working from home and was able to raise fully raise um, Travis for his whole guide dog puppy journey and then when he decided he didn't want to be a guide dog able to become his permanent forever home or forever forever home I'm just putting little stitches in just to hold down the the bottom but it's the sort of thing that even when it's on your piece you can stitch into it a bit more if you need to but yeah I think you'll agree that's a very sweet little nest um, I thought I had another jar of like beads and things but I found this one which has some little um, pearly type beads so I was thinking I'll probably add three of three of those into the nest maybe not that one that's a bit too too white it's a nice yellow one doesn't matter that they're not the same size I was hoping to have ones that were more eggy shaped I mean I could use these ones but they're a bit bit too bit too white I think so yeah, I'll probably just use those three in the nest. Um, and then my nest will get stitched onto my piece like that and you'll be able to look in and see the little um, the little eggs. And it'll be a lovely dimensional element. So I won't do that, um, but I will do that straight after. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing um, how I create this inlaid um, lacy artifact and i will yeah continue stitching my bird and in a future episode i will show you that with the writing and um, perhaps we'll come back and do some more decoration or i'll show you what i um, end up doing on that and then next time i'll show you further back down that way where i've got yeah nana's piece finished um, i've got dad's piece i'm going to put mum's piece on my my other grandpa's piece um, i've also still got my monogram piece to go on I've got um, I've got my little Tuscany or Italian sketchbook or Tuscany sketchbook to add I think back down that other end and as I mentioned I've got all the pieces for my brother and his family I've got some more pieces for myself and Alex uh, so yeah lots to add and I still want to do a garden a garden theme piece for my mum as well although I've got the chook piece for her but I want to add add some garden so lots to add um thanks so much for watching and i'll let you go and i look forward to seeing what else you're creating or post about it in the in the comments thanks everyone bye